Hey guys, PD here, and I hope you're doing awesome. And uh, today I'm super excited. Uh, I just want to chat to you. Um, I have had this question a few times, and today I want to try and answer it the best that I can, like God permitting. And um, and that is, you know, how to have intimacy with the Father. You know, how do we have that relationship with Him? You know, that we all want. You know, a relationship that's really strong and where we can. You know, I can truly, I truly believe that you can have an even stronger relationship with God than you have with people. And I actually think that that's the way it's supposed to be. You know, today we spend more time with everything else except God. You know, we, God is like this little priority in our life. Oftentimes he's kind of just this add on or this hobby. But really, man, that's not how it's supposed to be at all. And and it's actually incredibly dangerous to have God secondary in your life of anything you know it's it's not wife and family and then or maybe even god and then family and wife and whatever no 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 no. that's not how it works man it's god and then it's god then it's god then it's god you see and when you focus on the kingdom of god the rest falls into place so the there are these five um pillars if you will that i that i came with listed that that I want to walk you through that I believe is incredibly important for a healthy and good relationship with the father and and the first one on that list is um, repentance and repentance is in, is in incredibly important because we need to before I even go into the rest of that stuff man you need to have a clean conscience of before the father you need to be sprinkled clean by the blood of Yeshua uh, so you can come into his presence um, for in freedom, you know, and that means repenting from your old ways, repenting from the things you've done, um, you know, unintentionally, and also, you know, forgiving people, you know, calling those people that you've got unforgiveness towards and saying, you know what, I've been, I've had unforgiveness towards you for 20 years, but today I want to call you, and today I need to tell you that I forgive you. I'm so sorry, and you know, you say that even if you're not wrong, and you have to forgive people because if you do not forgive the word says that father cannot forgive us because we do not have a right to have unforgiveness in our heart in light of what Yeshua has done for us so the second one that I want to talk about is just entering his presence and when I talk about entering his presence I'm talking about getting with him in your secret place now the word says that if if we go and into our secret place, and that, in other words, a place where it's secret, there's no one is looking, it's just God that sees you. You move into that place, you close the door behind you, and you spend time with God. The word says if you do that, that God will exalt you in the open. If we humble ourselves in the secret place, God will exalt us in the open. Now, how do we enter that place? You see, this is why I really encourage you to read through the Torah portion series that I'm running because we're at some point we're going to start talking about that stuff more. Um, but anyway, entering his secret place is 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 man for me. It's it's it's, it's an absolute thing of fear and trembling, you know. Um, and the reason I say that is, you know, I I come into my room and I close the door. And I'm like, wow, you know what's going to happen right now is right now i'm gonna open my mouth and i'm gonna speak to the creator of the universe just think about that for a second man i'm gonna open my mouth and i'm gonna say things and the one who created me everything that i see and everything that i don't see he has got his ear turned towards me and he is hearing what i have to say to him I mean, what is that? That is crazy, man. That means like, that is just like, what for me? You know, that's just crazy. And, and it's, and it's, it places such a fear on me. It's like, well, Lord, like I'm, I'm coming before you, you know, Lord. And, I, and sometimes I'm just like, Father, Lord, help me. <laughs> you know, Lord, I don't know what to say, Father. Just help me. God, help me. And it's not even that I need help in something specific, but just like I'm so, man, I'm so small. And God is, is so, he is, he is so amazing that he, he sees me and he knows me, man. And he chooses to know me. And I mean, without him, I would not even have a relationship with him, right? And so when I have that realization, I come and I'm like, 
Father, and, and every single word that I utter in my prayer is considered and it's 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 spoken in fear and trembling. You see, and that's what God desires. He doesn't want us to just, OK, you know, uh, um, I come in and I, and I just like, oh, thank you, Lord. Uh, and then halfway through, we fall asleep while speaking to the creator of the universe. I mean, are you kidding me? You know, guys, we need to like into his presence in such a way, man, that we understand, Look, man, this is God we're talking about to here. He is God. He's not our buddy. He is God. He's our father. And we need to fear him, really. All right. So, guys, that's important. And, you know, a lot of times I find myself on my face, on the ground, on my face, praying, you know, and that's not even when something is wrong. That's just normal day, man, because I need to know. I need to know, man, that's who that's God. I, I can't take this this lightly. All right. And then the number three one. And, and by the way, these things that I'm talking about, they're not in some kind of a specific order as you can do this in any order. I'm just listing them. Right. So the third one that I want to talk about is worship. And I think this is such a big thing, man, especially in people that don't go to church. Like if let's say you're not going, I, I encourage anyone, everyone to go to, to fellowship, right? To go to not necessarily a building or whatever, but some kind of a fellowship of people where you can spend time with and speak about God. I mean, for me, that's that's what one of the elements has made me who I am is being with people and fellowship. But apart from that, I mean, if you don't have fellowship, you're probably not worshiping God. But this is a big mistake. You know, I've gone through times where I've had no fellowship and whatever, but I've had always to make time to worship the father. And, I, and I'm talking about, you know, even before I'm making these videos, even before, I'm, you know, every Sabbath, you know, randomly in, in, in the night when I'm home alone or whatever, you know, what I do is I just turn on worship music or whatever. And I go and I, and I worship the father, you know, I'm just like, for I, I exalt him, I worship him. And I, you know, and that is so important, man, to have that personal worship with the father, spending that time every single day and worshiping him, you know, and I'm obviously worship can be in many forms, but I'm speaking about the worship where you, you know, sing to him or, you know, a lot of times I'm in my car and I'm, and I'm just singing to the father without music. I'm just singing to him. I'm happy that none of you are hearing how what, how I'm singing because I'm not really a good singer, but he hears me, you know, and I, and I sing to him. All right. So worship is incredibly important. The fourth one that I want to just highlight um, is the word of God. And man, this is such a big one as well. All of them are so huge, but the, the, the word is so, man, I love the word so much. And, you know, if you don't love the word, if you don't spend a lot of time on the word, you're going to get destroyed. And I'm not saying that lightly. You're going to get destroyed for a lack of knowledge. You're going to not stand a chance against the lies of the enemy because if you do not know what truth is, and I mean, truth is his word. And if you don't have truth in you by studying his word, in other words, studying the walk of Yeshua, and I'm talking about uh, Genesis to Revelation. If you don't study all of that, you get destroyed, man. You're going to be a sucker for the lies of the enemy and you're going to not stand a chance. You're not going to be able to be used by God because if you don't have truth in you, how can he use you to minister truth? You see, we all want to be used, but we don't want to put in what we need to do to build our relationship with God. You know, he's not going to use you mightily if you don't know who he is. And one of the main avenues of understanding and knowing God is spending time in his word. A lot of times people would say, oh, but God never told me to do that. But then I would just say he already did. It's in his word, you know, but people don't know his word because we think that we can just, you know, praying in the secret place is awesome. Worshiping is awesome. Repenting is awesome. But if you do not have the word, all of that is useless because you'll not have the truth to go by. Right. So. So, guys, it's not enough, man. Every single day you need to spend time in his word. And I would say that it has to be more than 10 minutes a day. Even I, I mean, five minutes a day. It's not enough, man, to spend in his word. We need to spend a lot of time in his word every day. Stop. Turn off the TV. Open your Bible. Spend your time with the father. Right. And then the last one that I want to touch on, and this is this is super important as well. Sorry, I'm, all, I'm saying this a lot, but it is, is 
um, you know, loving people. And the reason, uh, and I'm going to, I'm connecting this kind of with evangelism and with, um, you know, just loving on people, giving to the poor, you know, caring for the poor, the, the widow, the orphan, you know, giving away, making a sacrifice on your part for someone else and for God. You know, God says that whatever you did to the least of these, you do unto me. Whatever you do to the beggar that you walk by, by this on the street, that you're, you're doing it to Yeshua, man. You know, and, and one day we're going to hear God say that to many people. You know, people are going to say, God, didn't I? I spent so much time in your word, Lord. I knew your word and your theology so well, Father. Lord, I, I worshipped you every day, Father. Lord, I did all of these things. And he's going to say to them, you know, what did you do for the least of these? Did you love on them? Did you care for them? What did you do for the widow and the orphan? What did you do for, you know, the, the, the blind man on the street? You know, and, and he's going to tell them, depart from me for for what you did to the least of these you did unto me. And see, that's man. When I see people, I see Yeshua and I tell them, you know, I've I've, I've told them many times um, like like a beggar or whatever. You know what, man? I see Yeshua in your eyes and, and then I give them something or I, I pray for them or whatever the case is. And you know how, what, what that does to someone? It changes people. It changes people forever, man. When you go and you tell someone like, man, God loves you so much. You may not know it, man, but God loves you so much, you know, and, and, you know, just giving someone a hug and just telling them, hey, you know who they are, you know, the, hey, man, you're, you know, that you're a son of the father. He created you and, and he's your father and he loves you, you know. So my point is this, is that when we start doing that, the spiritual gifts and all of these things that we read about in the New Testament start flowing through us naturally. And it's just a it's just a, a way that I found that when I started going out and praying for people and doing things like that, man, I started encountering I, me, the one doing it, started encountering God in a way that I've never done before without it. Because guess what? You are walking as Yeshua. It's part of walking as he walked. When you go and you pray for that blind man, guess what? You are walking as Yeshua. And one day that blind man's eyes may just open. And you know what? You'll be changed more than the blind man itself. You know, you will be the one that you and I've seen that. I've, it's happened to me when, I, when I've prayed for people and I, and I see them recover and or whatever the case is, I see God do a miracle in whatever way or form. It changes me more sometimes than it changes that person because the love of God comes and makes its home in me so that I can minister to that person. And then the love, because it flows through me as a channel in that process, that love changes me forever, man. And see, I feel a lot of us, we don't, we look nothing like Yeshua because we're just not walking it out. We're not going out and preaching the gospel praying for people in our daily walk, you spend time with people. We go out and pray for someone in your daily walk. When you go to shop, you know, the cashier at the shop, the, the lady there, or whoever they need you, you know, people are dying every day and, and they need you. The guy that you're walking by in your workplace, the, the guy you're sitting next to in your workplace, the, the, you know, all of these people, they need you and they're earnestly yearning to see you step into your identity as a son of God so that you can walk as Jesus for them because they need to see someone walk as Jesus. Man, if, if no one is going to see you walk as Jesus, they might just die without him because they've never had someone show them, man, this is Jesus. You know, this is what Jesus looks like. You know, I've seen that so many times when people have never had an example. They've heard many Christians condemn them and judge them. You know, a lot of atheists would say this. They've had many Christians condemn them and judge them. And but the, the, the reality is they've probably never seen a true Christian walk out Jesus in front of them. And because of that, they don't know who Jesus is. So let you be the one who becomes G a Jesus for someone who become who and I'm not saying we're Jesus. I'm just saying that we walk as Jesus. And because we walk as Yeshua, people see that. And then they want Yeshua because they can see that he's the one who enables us to walk as he walks. And then they want that. And they come and inquire, what is this hope that is within you? All right, guys, 
hope this blessed you, man. I want you to take all of these points seriously. I hope you wrote them down. Um, I'm going to put them in the description of this video point by point just so you can have them. And I want you to take them seriously and exercise them on a daily, daily, daily basis. I'm serious when I say daily. I want to challenge you if you're not doing it already. Go and on a daily basis practice these things. And you'll see that your relationship with God will just expand will just grow in an incredible way. Just as a bonus, I want to just add this one. Utilize the seventh day that set up, God set apart as holy for us. God gave us the Sabbath day for a reason, because He loves us and He wants us to spend time with Him. And so out of that place, I want to ask you to honor Genesis 2 verse 3. Honor the Sabbath day that He set as part as holy. It's one of His commandments. And when you do all of these things, I mean, all every Sabbath, all of these things that I just told you, they go on overload. I mean, yeah, overload for me, if I can say that way. I just do them. I try and do them the whole day, you know, because that is just like a, it's it's an amazing blessing for me, like the Sabbath. So, you know, if you've never heard about that, hey, look at some of my, I've got a playlist on the Sabbath. Go check that out. Um, but yeah, may God bless you and keep you guys. Hope this blessed you. Um, I love you guys so much and I'll see you in the next video.